count. I'd like to thank the applicants for their patience and understanding of the need to organize this meeting through the use of technology. The municipality has made every effort to ensure all affected property owners were informed and are able to participate in this planning process. Uh, Sue, could you read the note, please? One of the purposes of the Planning Act is to provide for planning processes that are open, accessible, timely, and efficient. Accordingly, all written submissions, documents, correspondence, emails, or other communications, including your name and address, form part of the public record and will be disclosed, made available by the municipality to such persons as the municipality sees fit, including anyone requesting such information. Accordingly, in providing such information, you shall be deemed to have consented to its use and disclosure as part of the planning process. Okay, thank you. I'd like to do our First Nations land acknowledgement. As we gather today, I'd like to acknowledge on behalf of Council and our community that we are meeting on the traditional territory of the Algonquin people. We would like to thank the Algonquin people and express our respect and support for their rich history. And we are extremely grateful for their many and continued displays of friendship. We also thank all the generations of people who have taken care of this land for thousands of years. Is there any declaration of pecuniary interest this, well, this afternoon, sorry. None, none here. None here. Okay, no. I see none. The purpose of the meeting is to hear person's comments in regards to an application for a subdivision. Applicant owners, 2825855, Ontario Limited, Mark Wilson. File number 47T220018, Agent, JP2G Consultants Incorporated, Anthony Homick. And with that, I will turn it over to our Madawaska Valley Planner, Mr. Luke Desjardins. Thank you, Mary Love. Uh, this is a public meeting being held in accordance with Section 51 of the Planning Act for a proposed plan of subdivision. Uh, as the mayor mentioned, the applicant is a numbered company, care of Mr. Mark Wilson, and the agent is JP2G Consultants, Inc., uh, care of Anthony Homick. Uh, at the request of the County of Renfrew, being the approval authority for new subdivisions, the township is holding this meeting to inform council and the public of the proposed development. An, applicant, an application, pardon me, has been submitted and deemed complete for the development of an 18.5 acre parcel of land to the east of Trader Lane and to the south of Siberia Road. This property is presently vacant. Mr. Holmick from JP2G will provide an overview presentation later in this meeting. But as a brief description of the proposal, the site is um, suggested to be developed with 28 semi-detached dwellings, which are side-by-side -side units, six single-detached dwellings, these are at the end of a, uh, cul a proposed new cul-de-sac road, and approximately 40 additional dwelling units in either an apartment building or what's known as stacked townhomes, stacked townhomes which is a, a two-story a two uh, building type. Uh, this subdivision will require the upgrading of Trader Lane to municipal standards and the extension of water and wastewater services to the site by the developer. Additionally, as uh, the process for a subdivision under the Planning Act, the township would either assume 5% of the land for parkland purposes or receive cash in lieu, equaling a value of 5% of the lands. Um, that, is, that is my overview of the uh, proposal. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, Luke, did you want to continue with uh, item six, the report on the application? Thank you. Um, I can advise that the application was filed to the County of Renfrew on July 11th of 2022 this year. Uh, that application was filed following pre-consultation meetings with the Township and County. Uh, the application was subsequently deemed complete on September 28th of 2022, and notice was given uh, for this uh, public meeting by way of uh, mail out, by posting on site, and the township also uh, placed notice on our website, our Facebook page, and um, later on a, a notice went in the Valley Gazette as well to inform the public of this meeting. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Lindsay Bennett Farquhar, who is a county planner. And Lindsay, did you want to take us through number seven? Sure. Thank you, Mary Love. Um, so, just as quickly as Luke mentioned, the County of Renfrew provides approval for plans of subdivision, and we work together 
with the township as well as the applicant to process the application. And this meeting is one of the first steps in processing the application. The purpose of this meeting is to give the community an opportunity to hear about the proposal as well as to provide comments. The county and township staff will take these comments into consideration when we are reviewing the application. As mentioned, um, a notice of application and public meeting was circulated to all property owners in accordance with the, with the Planning Act and all required public agencies such as utilities and school boards. Um, at this time, we have received comments back from Ontario Power Generation, on Hydro One, TELUS, and the Ministry of Transportation. Our office will issue a notice of decision of approval or refusal of the plan of subdivision. If you would like to be notified of the county's decision, you can either email me at lbennett at the county of renfrew.on.ca or send in a written letter to the county of renfrew office. And that's just quickly, that's all we have right now for uh, any written comments. Okay, great. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, I'll turn it back over uh, to Luke in case there's any other further written comments that he wanted to speak about. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to, uh, so the township and the, and the county is in the process of receiving comments and many of those are coming in by email and we're receiving phone calls as well. And the, I can assure that all of those um, correspondence will be responded to uh, in time and will form part of the, uh, the uh, thought process behind the decision for this plan of subdivision. I do want to stress, however, that this, this public meeting is, is early on in this subdivision approval process. And in accordance with the Planning Act, any written comments that, that the public may wish to submit can be received at any time up until the county makes a decision for the draft approval of this plan of subdivision. So um, uh, I just, for, for, for members of the public who may be listening, we can still absorb information um, on the township website. We have posted the notice of this public meeting and also included um, on that webpage is a, is a collection of the stu supporting studies that have been submitted. So uh, the public can feel free to uh, review those uh, supporting documents and consider any comments and discussion from this public meeting and by all means follow up with either township or county staff to uh, provide any thoughts or comments that they may have. Okay, thank you, Luke. Um, so I think we've been pretty clear about that. This is very preliminary and the opportunity to comment is fully open to members of the public. All right, we're at oral and written presentations uh, by those in attendance. And in particular, we are going to have a presentation from Anthony Homick of JP2G Consultants. And Mr. Homick's presentation is available to the public on the municipality's website, so you can get a copy of it. But I will turn it over to him to take us through the presentation. And I'm assuming you're going to need to share a screen. That, that's correct. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor Love, and thank you, members of council, for uh, the opportunity to speak this afternoon. So I'm just going to start sharing my screen. And just let me know that uh, you can see that. Yes, we can. We can on Zoom. I miss, uh, could someone in council chambers let us know? Yes, we can see it clearly. Okay, great. Perfect. Okay, well, yes, uh, thanks again, Mayor Love and uh, members of council for the opportunity to present this afternoon. My name is Anthony Homick, and I'm a senior planner with JP2G Consultants. So uh, as noted, I have prepared a presentation where I'm going to walk through the draft plan of subdivision and the development concept. And I'm gonna provide an overview of all the supporting studies that have also been prepared as part of the application. And my hope here is to give everybody a better idea of uh, what we are proposing and to answer some of the questions that may be out there. And uh, to reiterate what, uh, what's been said already uh, several times, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here to listen and this is early days and any comments that we hear from uh, members of council and members of the public will certainly be taken into consideration as we move through the process. And I, uh, I will say that uh, the one of the representatives of the uh, the ownership of the of the site, Mark Wilson, is intending to be here to observe and, and listen to all the feedback as well. He was uh, sitting at home, though, and about 20 minutes ago texted me to say that he lost power. So he's trying to get himself to the uh, nearest coffee shop so that he can join as soon as he can. 
Okay. So start, starting with the site context, as uh, many, if not everyone on the call will know, the site is located at the southwest corner of town at the intersection of Siberia and Trader Lane, immediately across from the hospital. And uh, as, uh, as you may be aware, or can see on the screen, the site currently consists of a vacant field, some vacant woodlands and wetlands. And the site is approximately 18 and a half acres in total area. Barry's Bay is a settlement area. Uh, just to give some, some background on the planning policy context here, uh, Barry's Bay is a settlement area as defined by the provincial policy statement. And the application is going to be evaluated against the village community designation in the County of Renfrew official plan. Both the provincial policy statement and the official plan direct growth to built up areas such as villages and towns, particularly where municipal services are available. So all planning decisions have to be consistent with the PPS and are required to conform to the official plan. Now it's also worth noting that this site has been designated for growth since the early 1990s. The site was designated suburban in the former township of Sherwood Jones and Burns official plan. And at the time that suburban designation recognized that parts of the suburban area, such as this site, are serviced by piped municipal water and or municipal sewer services from Barry's Bay. And moving on to zoning, I'm not gonna walk through all of them, but there are specific standards in the zoning bylaw for things like lot frontage and area and building height. And uh, obviously we can, we can discuss later if there are questions in particular uh, elements of the zoning bylaw, but the site was zoned to R2 or rezoned to R2 exception two in 2006 for a similar development concept. The, that, and the concept at that time uh, permitted single detached dwellings and cluster housing, which also are uh, townhouses. Townhouses would constitute cluster housing. Uh, the zoning also permitted a central amenity complex, a private club and some active and passive recreational uses. At the time it was designed as more of a retirement resort community. And uh, a zoning bylaw amendment would be required to permit the, uh, an apartment building if it's decided that an apartment building will be proposed on the site. A zoning bylaw amendment will also be required to zone the land within the wetland boundary as environmental protection and to enshrine that no building is permitted within 20 meters from that wetland boundary. <clears throat> so the draft plan a subdivision is intended to carve up the property into blocks and lots and to lay out new roads. Uh, the draft plan also identifies which blocks will be developed with residential uses and which blocks will be reserved for other uses. So as I mentioned, the site is approximately 18 and a half acres. There are 13 residential blocks and lots proposed that take up approximately 6.6 .6 acres of the site. And you can see the, the residential blocks are in sort of sandy pink, right, ready pink uh, adjacent to Siberia Road and in yellow surrounding the new cul-de-sac that Luke mentioned. And block 13 adjacent to Siberia is where we are intending to, are proposing to develop higher density in the form, as Luke mentioned, of per, perhaps an apartment building or some stacked townhouses. Blocks one and two, as you, you can see, you may be able to see in, in yellow, are being designed with some flexibility in mind to accommodate perhaps a, a range of housing types, um, perhaps, uh, semis or triplexes, that sort of thing. Um, and the rest of the blocks, two, three, four, all the way around the, the cul-de-sac will be, uh, or, or have been designed to accommodate singles or uh, semi-detached dwellings. What I'd uh, really like to point out here is that over half of the site, 9.6 acres approximately, is to remain as wetland and possibly some future water access for the new development and that no development whatsoever is proposed within that wetland area. And uh, it's also worth noting that the closest residential lot is sort of around the corner to the left of the stormwater pond in blue is uh, the closest lot would be about 70 meters from the controlled water level of the lake. So there's, there's a significant setback being proposed from the lake itself. Um, so as I mentioned, the the, the green that you can see on the screen is the wetland water access block and the blue is the is proposed to be a stormwater management block and there is a small block 
adjacent to Trader Lane that is proposed to be a pump station for the uh, sewer services for the new development. So moving on, uh, as I mentioned, the draft plan identifies which blocks are for residential uses, but the building types aren't specified through the plan of subdivision process. The building types are, are uh, specified in the zoning bylaw. So right now we're, we're just laying out where, uh, where the residential uses will go on the site. And uh, as I noted at uh, block 13, there's a we're, we're uh, currently advancing two concepts, one being an apartment building and one being some stacked townhouses. So this uh, on the screen here is the concept that we have at the moment for an apartment building. <clears throat> and the next slide is the similar, the same block, but just showing the stacked townhouse units. Um, both of these content, uh, both concepts at the moment do feature a mix, as Luke mentioned, of, uh, of single detached dwellings and semi-detached dwellings for the rest of the block or the rest of the development rather. And because these are too small to see, I've put both of these concepts side by side uh, so that you can compare them. The apartment building is currently shown as having 42 units, while the townhouses are currently being shown conceptually as having 44 units. And we have not done any design work other than laying out parking and ensuring that the parking works for the site and that access works for the site, but we haven't done any work in terms of what the buildings are gonna look like or what the floor plans are gonna look like. Uh, it also hasn't been determined yet if these units are going to be offered for sale as condominiums or if uh, there will be a rental component. So that, that hasn't been determined yet. <clears throat> I'm now gonna take a few minutes to walk through the studies that were prepared as part of the application. So starting with archeology, span a stage one and stage two archeological assessment was completed in 2021 in accordance with the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport guidelines. And the stage one archeological assessment is typically what they refer to as a desktop exercise where they, the archeologists will look at existing archeological studies on the record and they will look at uh, historical documents that they can get their hands on, such as archival research and that sort of thing. And then stage two is where they actually go out in the field and dig some test pits and look for any potential for, arch for archaeological uh, artifacts. And so the archaeologists went out on site and conducted their stage two investigation, didn't find anything, and concluded that there was no further assessment required. And the archaeological assessment was accepted and entered into the Ontario Public Register of Reports in July of 2021. <clears throat> Next, uh, we uh, conducted and completed an environmental impact study and the EIS was completed in accordance with PPS and official plan policy. And the EIS is, uh, has several goals, which are to evaluate natural conditions and the ecological significance within the site to identify potential impacts of residential development and to identify ecologically appropriate mitigation measures. And uh, it's also uh, worth noting that the environmental impact study is currently in the process of being peer reviewed uh, through the process by a company called Cambium. And I also wanna note that prior to developing the subdivision layout and the concept that we're working on at the moment, a pre-consultation meeting was actually held with both the Ministry of the Environment, Conservation and Parks and the MNR to establish the scope of the EIS. And uh, the, the MNR did not require the wetland to be evaluated. Now, there are over a dozen recommendations provided in the EIS, so I'm not going to read through all of them, but I did want to specifically call out a few highlights. Those being to protect birds, there is no uh, recommended that there be no site alteration between April 15th and April, uh, August 15th, unless topsoil and vegetation has been removed before that time. To protect bats, the recommendation is that there are there is no tree or shrub removal between April 15th and October 1st, unless a bat survey is con conducted by a qualified professional. Uh, as I noted earlier, a 20 meter building setback from the boundary of the un unevaluated wetland is recommended. Um, the recommendation is also to maintain as much vegetation on the remainder of the site in as natural a state as possible. There will also be strict erosion and sediment control 
during construction and there will be vigilant monitoring for species at risk during construction. So if anybody on site while there uh, is construction ongoing discovers a species at risk, they will, be, they will be trained on how to react to that and what to do in that instance. Next, there was a geotechnical report prepared and the geotechnical report is intended to establish the subsurface soil and groundwater conditions at uh, seven borehole locations throughout the property. And some of you may have seen those uh, blue stacks on the site that are, uh, that are spread out around the field there. And those are, those are where the boreholes were inserted. And there's actually a monitoring device in each of those that is uh, checking the groundwater level. <clears throat> the geotechnical report also provided recommend or provides recommendations on the most suitable type of foundations, footing depths and bearing pressure for the proposed buildings. And lastly, it provides recommendations for pavement structure thickness for the upgraded trader lane that Luke mentioned and the new proposed, uh, the proposed parking lot for either the apartment building concept or the stack townhouses and for the new street, the new cul-de-sac in, uh, in the middle of the development. Next, a stormwater management report was prepared and the stormwater management report provides a strategy with respect to quality and quantity controls that are consistent with the MOE and well now the MECP design manual and other best practices. So the proposal is intended or through, the, uh, through the stormwater management strategy, the intention is that 80% of total suspended solids will be removed through the stormwater management pond through the treatment that is proposed there. And in terms of quantity, the design has been, uh, is intended to accommodate peak flows from both five and 100 year storms. Uh, as noted, the stormwater management will be managed uh, or will be, will be managed, excuse me, through a network of storm sewers and the stormwater detention pond. And it's also worth mentioning that a pre-consultation meeting was also held in respect of the stormwater management strategy with the Ministry of the Environment. A preliminary servicing report was also prepared, which incorporates the findings of the stormwater management report into the overall civil engineering design for the site. The preliminary servicing report also provides design for the upgrades to Trader Lane and the new road with respect to cross sections for what those roads are gonna look like, provides a preliminary design for sanitary sewers, the water service and utilities such as hydro. And uh, as has been uh, noted, it, the development is proposed to connect to available municipal water and sanitary sewer infrastructure. And it's also worth noting that full municipal services, sanitary and, and sewer, is the preferred approach under both the provincial policy statement and under the county's official plan. And so as it relates to some concerns about Lake uh, Kamenitskeg being at capacity, those at capacity policies are primarily intended to address septic systems. And given that the sewer uh, septic uh, sewage from the site is going to be conveyed into the municipal sanitary sewer, there, there really should be no risk of contamination entering the lake from a septic perspective. A transportation impact study was also prepared by a firm called HDR. This report was required to assess the operational impacts of the proposed subdivision on the surrounding road network. It also takes into account other development, other background development that's being proposed or that has been approved and not yet constructed. So the, the particularly at this intersection, the transportation consultants looked at the proposed expansion of the Valley Manor. And so the numbers there have been incorporated into the transportation study for this site. And it was concluded by the transportation consultants that the surrounding road network has more than enough capacity and that there are no improvements required to the road network. Those, those improvements sometimes take the shape of turn lanes, uh, traffic signals, that sort of thing. So they concluded that there were no upgrades required from a um, traffic perspective. And lastly, a planning justification report was prepared by yours truly. And the planning justification report basically ties everything together and assesses the proposed subdivision against the provincial policy statement, the official plan and the zoning bylaw. Uh, I review the recommendations from all of the other supporting studies and, and evaluate those. And then I provide a professional planning opinion on the appropriateness of the proposal. So in conclusion, uh, 
it is my professional planning opinion that the proposal is consistent with provincial policy and conforms to the County of Renfrew official plan. Further, that the development would be compatible with the surrounding neighborhood and provide for an appropriate amount of intensification and provided all the recommendations in the environmental impact study are implemented that the development should be considered good planning. Now I'm happy to answer any questions that council may have and uh, thank you again, Mayor Love and members of council for your time. Okay, thank you, Anthony. Uh, we'll get to questions from council later, but we do want to hear from members of the public. Um, so, sorry, just give me a second here. Uh, I'd like to remind everyone once again that the purpose of this public meeting is for council to hear your input and no decision is being made today. Everyone who wishes to speak will be given an opportunity to do so. If there is a detailed information you want to share, please give us a brief overview today and submit that information in writing to staff. Council will have an opportunity to review your written submissions at a later date. So to start the public input component, I'd like to start by calling on the people on Zoom, and then I'll go to those in council chambers. If you are on Zoom and would like to speak, please turn on your video and put up your hand. When I call on you, please unmute and state your full name before you begin. I do notice we have one person who is on the phone and that is just a little more challenging for them. Uh, perhaps before I start the Zoom component, I'll just ask the person on the phone, did you wish to speak to uh, the, this application? No, not at this time, thank you. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to check that. All right. Now, if those on Zoom who want to speak, I do see, um, sorry, sir, but you're Connie Hutter to me. <laughs> uh, okay, yes, I, I realized that you are Connie Hutter. So anyways, if you would like to speak, just please let us know your name and uh, unmute yourself. And we'll start with you. Oh, oh David. we lost you. How, how did that happen? <laughs> Oh. It's the joys of tech. Okay. Just oh, tip up your wonderful? screen. Pardon me? Tip up your screen so we can see you if that's possible. No, I know what I did. I turned it around. There, there. we go. Okay, please proceed. David J. Hutter. My question is, why isn't this develop, development on the opposite side of Trader Lane versus where it's proposed now. And my reasoning is there is no ho homes uh, going to be affected if it was on the opposite side of Trader Lane. Right now, you've got a bungalow that's uh, owned by the Haskins and an empty lot that possibly could, a house could be built there. And you will be impacting their view. And also, uh, it, like it will be obstructing the view of the uh, residents uh, in Haskins bungalow. Uh, and it's going to impact traffic, which is very heavy right now because of the hospital. And when the new Valley Manor is built, behind the hospital, that's gonna cause a lot more traffic. And there's a considerable amount of traffic there right now. And I can't understand why the Ministry of Transportation, the MNR uh, feels there should not be a turning lane uh, uh, into the development onto trailer lane. So there's my concerns for not approving of the development as to where it is proposed now. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, I will say to everyone, staff are going to be noting your concerns and you will be notified of any updates on the file. Uh, I don't know if uh, Mr. Homick wanted to speak to that, to your, your question or not, but I will give him a chance to if he would like to. Uh, sure, I, I can 
simply address the the fact that uh, our our clients own this piece of land and they they don't own the land across the street. So we we it's can't propose. Sale. I I certainly understand that it is for sale, um, but my my clients have uh, they own this piece of property and this is the piece of property that we've been working on together for certain several years now, and um, have have not have not bought the property across the road. So. That's, uh, that's all I can really say to that. And um, with respect to traffic and transportation, as noted, the uh, traffic consultants did take a look at the uh, traffic, existing traffic volume in the area and where those traffic volumes are going to go as a result of the Valley Manor development and uh, have concluded that there is sufficient capacity in the road network. Have they taken okay. into consideration of the new Valley Manor being built? Yes. Behind the hospital. Yes, Mr. Homick said they had. Now, uh, Gwen, I don't know what's happened, but I seem to have some sort of something that's popped up. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. I, I sometimes have to deal with little odd things that happen. Okay. So we have noted, uh, Mr. Hutter, your, your concerns. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to this application? Any hands up on Zoom? Now, am I missing everyone? or Oh, I have two screens. One second. I'll I go. Nobody. Oh, well. Okay. I'm not no. seeing anyone else no. on Zoom. Hello. Hello. So, um, oh, sorry, uh, Mr. Thistlewaite. Thistlewaite? Yes. yes. Could yeah. you possibly turn your video on? Or will your internet not allow that? Your video on? It is on. Can you see me now? Okay. No, we can't. Oh, well, okay. Sorry. Yeah, just, just, just one okay. second. Just one yeah, second. Yeah, we'll let's let's give him uh, just a few seconds to see if he can turn his video on. And if not, you can still speak to the applicant. Ah, wait a minute. There we go. Oh, we can see you now. Okay, so please just state your full name and then let us know um, your thoughts. Yes, uh, Bill Thistlewaite. Um, I'm the owner of the property that would be backing on to this development site proposal uh, at the end of Trader Lane. And uh, my concerns would be just in just through the conversation the gentleman had in regards to the setbacks with the environmental, any environmental issues with the wetlands. Um, I'm not sure I understood completely. Um, the, the, the Ministry of Natural Resources or the environment uh, study that was done, uh, will that be finalized before any decision is made? Because the way I understood it was <clears throat> their recommendations weren't complete. So what does that mean? Uh, is the proposal going ahead prior to, prior to any comments from them? Like, I, would I be correct in saying that the decision has been made as to what other changes may, may, may be made to that environmentally sensitive land and how it would affect us being on the other side of that land? Okay, did Mr. Homick, did you want to speak to that? Sure, I can certainly speak to that. Um, as, uh, as I did mention earlier, the the environmental impact study that we completed is being is going through what's called a peer review process. And so the the county and the township don't have uh, someone on staff who has the environmental expertise to review the environmental impact study. And so they hire the, a peer reviewer who is a, a third party impartial body that they send the environmental impact study to. And they've actually provided some initial commentary um, that will that that is requiring a little bit of further investigation on our part to so there will be to answer your question there is certainly it's not uh complete by any stretch and we will have to do some additional work on the environmental impact study to address these peer review comments and then we'll send the report back to the peer reviewer again for any further comment they might have and so there will be a little bit of uh, a back and forth there to come to something that the peer reviewers find acceptable on behalf of the county and the township well uh I'm not quite sure I understand what you're saying, a lot of going back and forth, but is a decision going to be made on this proposal prior to any, like the environmental impact on this property? Like, is, you know, like I, you don't have, seem to have a definite answer from the, from the Ministry of Environment, but it, it is a wetland. And does that designation have to be changed for you to encroach on that environmentally with uh, wetland? Okay. Like a wetland is a wetland and it's designated as a wetland. Yes. Environmentally yes. protected. Okay. So when does this change? So 
if, if, if I may, um, yes, sorry. We, we are not proposing, there's not any development being proposed on the wetland. Um, so if, if you can recall the slide I showed earlier at the beginning, the big green blob, there is, that's all going to be preserved basically as it is right now. Um, so there's no development proposed on any of the site that is currently okay. considered wetland. Okay, thank you. One other right, and, okay, just, just to be clear, no decision will be made until these studies are completed and peer reviewed and that process is complete. So is, is there, there may timeline? be, Sorry. Um, honestly, I'm not certain there's a, there's a timeline under the planning act, but it, it may take a bit of time to do this process. It usually does with plans of subdivision. So that process will be gone through and completed before a decision is made. Uh, the other thing is it shows on the uh, map on the highway there on the billboard, it shows water access. Can you explain that? Okay. I don't see water access uh, mm -hmm. to be because of the wetlands. Okay. Sure. Um, so the, that block is intended to remain as, as the wetland block. And also there's a potential idea that there may be some water access provided through that block in the form of perhaps a walking trail or a boardwalk that would give access to a potential future dock on the lake. And that would, um, there's no decision been made on that yet, but anything, anything related to uh, boardwalk, walking trail, and a dock would have to go through a separate MNR permit. See, as it is okay. now, we're at the end okay. of Trader Lane. I'm sorry, at, we're at the end of Trader Lane here. We always, even now we have traffic uh, coming to the end of Trader Lane. Are you there? Yes, okay. Uh, um and, and we're concerned that we're going to see more traffic at the end of Trader Lane, people coming in, driving down, turning around in our property and exiting and not including the amount of, uh, of uh, walking traffic and whatever else there may be. Uh, so that would be another concern of ours is the amount of traffic we may see, whether it's accidental or just people coming down to, uh, uh, to have a look. So that's going to impact us along with, as far as the trader lane goes, uh, and upgrades to the, uh, uh, the uh, road, um, would the hydro, well, uh, uh, would that be developed all, or, or, trans, or changed all the way down to our property? And what changes could we expect to the front of our property, um, which is important to us? Along with the hydro, would the hydro be going underground? Uh, what was happening with the hydro and how would it affect the frontage on our property with the hydro and, and the road is what I just mentioned. So we have concerns as far as uh, what would happen in that, in that sense. Okay, thank you, sir. I think, I think staff has noted your numerous concerns and uh, we may not have answers to all those at this preliminary point in time, but I do wanna make sure I can get others in as well and with their thoughts, I notice. So, um, so when, when, would we, when would we be notified? When, we, when would we know as to these changes and, and what those changes would be? Uh, okay, um, Mr. Homick, do you have any Maybe rough he, idea? Maybe he could answer that question. Uh, sure, and, and I could answer the, your other two questions as well. And, uh, with and respect if I just to... might add okay. that this development is going to affect our property value as, as well. Okay, thank you, sir. I have to keep moving. I have to move this forward. Like so answer. I will get, I'm going to get him, Mr. Homick to answer the questions that you've provided that he can answer, and then we will move on. Okay, thank you. please, thank you, you do have an opportunity to put any of your other concerns or any of these in writing and send them to staff. So Mr. Homick, can you address the questions you can answer at this point? Sure. Uh, thank you. So with respect to the road upgrade, the proposal is only to upgrade Trader Lane to the entrance into the new road that's proposed as part of the development. So it would not be upgraded down near where you are. And hydro is, is proposed to be, uh, at the moment it's proposed to still be above grade. Um, but we further on through the process, uh, once, once this, once, um, if, if approved, we would go through the process with, with hydro to come up with a design and uh, that may be above ground or that may be buried. We don't know yet. Thank okay, you. thank you. All right, I'm going to move on to, then to uh, Greg McLeod. You have your hand up. If you could turn on your video, that would be great. Super, can you hear me? I can hear you. I just okay. can't see you. Thank you, you Mary Love. And uh, hello, everyone. 
Uh, my question isn't in relation to the site planning, but it's something I noted that there were two versions of whether there were going to be multiple units or one single apartment building. And my question is uh, more in relation to whether the township has a plan or some um, element uh, for affordable housing. And the reason I ask this is that staffing in healthcare is a real challenge, and uh, staff in healthcare tend to be younger. So affordability is a real issue. So just wondering if there's any component of affordability within the plan. Okay, thank you, Greg. Um, typically, affordable housing requires a component of uh, of funding from levels, other levels of government. And at this point in time, I don't believe there's any funding for this project coming from the province or the federal, federal government. However, is it possible for me to ask our planner to maybe speak to that? I'm sorry, Luke, I'm gonna put you on the spot. <laughs> thank, thank you, Mary Love, that's what I'm here for. Um, so again, to, to add to your comments, um, these will be market uh, driven uh, units, but uh, as the township planner, um, it is certainly a desirable form of development by the simple fact of seeing a variety of housing types being proposed um, um, through development that's not always achieved. So um, I'm, I'm um, very happy to see that there could be a mixture of at least semi-detached and smaller units and possibly in an apartment building, which I think will be very attractive for the community. And, and just to add to Mr. McLeod's comments, the, um, the, uh, the uh, consideration of affordable housing is certainly not lost on me. And it's something that's very important to the township and that I as the planner will be working on policies as we progress to look at uh, a new and a variety of housing types which may work for our community, which may fill in some gaps for the uh, for lower income housing options for people in time. Thank you. Okay, thank much. you, Luke. Thank you. All right. I see uh, well collector, your hand is up. Um, if you could let us know your name and please proceed. Hi there, it's Lorraine Nombrowski. I'm here with my husband Jim. We're neighboring of uh, the uh, plan subdivision and we just want to express our complete support for this along with my sister Helen Brzezinski she's a property owner and it's a much needed uh, housing situation that we need in this Madawaska Valley so we 100% support it. Okay thank you very much. Uh, all right is there anyone else on Zoom who'd like to speak to this proposal? You will need to put your video on or put the, the symbol hand up so that I know you want to speak. I don't want to miss anyone. Uh, okay, John's iPad. John, <laughs> please uh, introduce yourself and proceed. Oh, there Hi, we go. my name is John Haskins. I own the property right at the top of the hill. Um, just curious, we're, we purchased this uh, property about two and a half years ago from my mother. Um, we, were, we knew there was a possibility of a development happening but then we heard that it kind of disappeared. So that was fine with us. Now we're hearing there could possibly be an apartment building right beside my driveway. I was just curious, two questions, if they will be working with a, a sound barrier wall or some kind of privacy wall across the front of our property, as well as the side. And I don't know if council's ever done any kind of testing on Siberia Road to realize the traffic and the speed that the vehicles go up and down that road. With the Valley Manor coming in the near future, I had heard rumor of a traffic light at the intersection. Sometimes it'll take me five minutes to get out of my driveway with people coming from the hospital and people going 80 kilometers up and down Siberia Road. I was just wondering if there's been any kind of a, a survey or a test on any of that. Okay, thank you. Can I see if Mr. Homick can respond? Sure, I can, I can certainly respond to the first part of the question and I can take a shot at the second part. Uh, so with respect to privacy, um, noise wall, that sort of thing, uh, that's, that's something that would, that would come into play um, 
much further on in the process here, but that's a, a comment certainly very well taken. And uh, as we refine the design and we move through the process, we will certainly uh, be very mindful of, of privacy on, on your home next door. And, and we, can always have, uh, we can always have conversations about, um, come to some sort of agreement that, um, or at least have some conversations about what you might be looking for in that regard. So we'll certainly take that into consideration. Um, with respect to traffic, um, aside from the, the comments that I'd already made about the traffic study that was conducted, uh, I think the comment or the question about whether or not there have been any uh, accounts and sort of uh, evaluation of speeding on the, on the road is probably better suited to township staff. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm just trying to see. I don't actually have, I can't tell if I have any staff. <laughs> from operations. Uh, Sue, uh, could I maybe turn this over to you and just ask, has, uh, have the operations staff done any traffic studies or anything like that on Siberia Road? I realize it is a county road. Uh, yes, I, I would have to refer to Hillary, but I do recall um, we were going to be requesting that potentially the county of Renfrew would be doing a count on that road. I'm not sure if that has occurred or not, or if the request was made. I think okay. we were waiting to see uh, following this public meeting. Okay, so the point has, has been noted and we will uh, uh, pursue that a little further to see where we're at with that. Uh, oh, uh, Anthony, could, yes. Yeah, and, and I could just add to that actually, um, I should have mentioned that county transportation and engineering staff will be reviewing the traffic study. So we haven't had any, we have not received any comments yet from, uh, from county staff in respect of the, tra the uh, traffic study, but um, county staff will be reviewing it. Okay, great. Um, yes, so they, sh as they should be because it is a county road, we must, must keep Uh, Mayor Love, we lost your volume. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> I might have accidentally Better. touched the button. Okay, you can hear me now. I have been informed that Mr. Kuchkowski, our operations manager, is on the, the Zoom meeting. I can't see you, Hillary. Did you want to respond? There you are. To you, uh, Madam Love. Uh, so it is opportunity responsibility. First of all, can you hear me? Yes, we can. So it is upper tier responsibility, Siberia Road. We would have no jurisdiction on that road for, to conduct a traffic count, maybe in conjunction with uh, the county, but it is, they maintain it. They do everything on this road. Thank you. Okay, so we will await the input of, of county uh, uh, public works into this uh, process. All right, uh, okay, I see uh, Helen Ben. Your hand is up. Helen, would you turn on your video and introduce yourself? Yeah, well, the light's not very good here. Um, so I'm Helen Ben, and my question is, and I'm sorry, I apologize. I was uh, 10 minutes late for the start of this, so it might have been said then. But for the lots that are for sale, is there um, a stipulation as to what gets built on them, on the obviously not the apartment buildings or but if you buy a lot that's designated for a semi do you own both the semis or does it have to have to be a certain size um or, or stipulations about what you can actually build when you buy one of those individual lots okay mr homick <laughs> uh, yes absolutely there will be stipulations in the zoning bylaw and so the zoning bylaw will say um, maximum height, maximum uh, size of the dwelling, uh, setbacks that are required from the property lines and that sort of thing. So if somebody is purchasing what would be a semi lot, are they purchasing possibly two houses then? Uh, not necessarily. Um, mm -hmm. There, there is the possibility um, that so when you when you're putting together a plan of subdivision, um, the lots are are there just to um, identify which where residential units can be built, and so mm -hmm. there are lots that are currently proposed as uh, semi-detached dwellings that may end up in fact only developed with a detached dwelling, for example. 
Okay. And then my other question is um, not to hog the time here. I apologize. So is there a builder that's going to take over and do the whole project or does the buyer of the lot, uh, uh, you know, hire their own builder? All I can say to that is it's uh, it's far too early for uh, okay. a determination to have been made on that yet. We We just don't know. Okay. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any, is there anyone else on Zoom who wishes to speak to uh, this application or this, this subdivision? I'm just trying to check. Okay, I don't see any other hands up on Zoom. All right, hopefully I've got you all. And if not, uh, I may just come back for a final round on Zoom in case uh, I've missed someone. Now, anyone who wishes to speak in council chambers will need to use a microphone at the council table. So if you could please put your hand up so the deputy clerk can assist you or Madam the Mayor. CAO clerk. Yes. I see a hand up. Okay, where do you see the hand up? Uh, Sorry, I'm, I'm missing Anna. a hand. Anna. Uh, yeah, Anna. Ernie Proplinski. Oh, uh, Councillor Poplinski, there will be an opportunity for Council to speak oh, right God. after we complete the public input. So you, you will get it. You will get an opportunity. Um, at the moment, I'd like to go to Council Chambers, and like I said, if you if you're in Chambers, please identify, put your hand up that you if you wish to speak, so the Deputy Clerk can assist you. And again, when I call on you, please state your full name before you begin. Is there anyone in Chambers who wishes to speak? I can't see the oh, audience yes. in chambers. So. Uh, yes, Mr. Uh, Larry Stampakoski will come to the microphone. Okay, thank you. Mayor Love, uh, Hannah yes. had her hand up way before that. Uh, I will come, sorry, I couldn't see her, but I will come back to her. Let me just complete okay. with, with council chambers and I will come back to Zoom. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mayor, go ahead. Mayor uh, Love. The new, uh, isn't there a new road going to be built for the new Valley Manor going to Highway 60? Everybody is crying about the traffic coming out from the hospital. Uh, at the moment, I can't speak to that. I, uh, there is nothing that is currently planned. Well, I, I heard that. I heard the, prop, the, the road is going to be built towards Highway 60 across Walter Dombrowski's or whoever owns the land going to Highway 60 at this behind point, Ronnie Shala. Uh, okay, so at this point, council does have a small piece of uh, property that is part of a tripartite agreement with the hospital in Valley Manor to uh, extend a small piece of road to provide a secondary access, but this is not what you're referring to. Uh, that's the only thing that is currently in existence. Um, so I can't speak to that, sir. Uh, so at this traffic. point, could you just, could you, uh, you're here to speak to this particular proposal. So if you have any thoughts on this application, please proceed with those. No, I, I just want to talk to Mark Wilson about the topsoil. Okay, thank you. Uh, then is there anyone else in council chambers who did want to speak to this application? Sue, is there anyone We're else? not seeing any. Yes, I have one more hand. Um, okay. I have uh, June. I know okay. that this is developed develop housing uh, for uh, people who have income. There are many, many people here who do, do not have the kind of income that's going to allow them to purchase, uh, maybe not even rent. I know in some areas of the province, in apartment buildings, a certain number of apartments are set aside for geared to income. I know I'm crossing another barrier into uh, uh, Renfrew County saying that, but I wanted to be the voice for the people who might need that. Um, we never go wrong when we help our neighbors. Thank you. Okay, uh, could you please state your name for the record just so I have it? Really? June, like the month, Zaflick. Okay, thank you. 
Thank you, June. Is there anyone else in council chambers? Sue, do you see anyone else? Uh, not in the audience that All wants right. to speak. Okay, so I will come back to Zoom and Hannah, I see your hand is up. So Hannah, turn on your video. And, uh, please state your full name and proceed. Can you hear? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Good, thank you. I'm sorry. My name is Hannah Domagala. I have a property in Barry's Bay. I have not uh, been listening to the entire presentation and meeting as I was on another meeting at work. And I did want to give a couple of comments. I am in a generally in support of building more housing in within the limits of Barry's Bay, as this is definitely the sound uh, planning principle that we should go on, especially since there are services available. I am uh, questioning if this form of development is the best one from the public, not from the developers, of course, perspective, but from the public perspective. We know this is a prime piece of uh, property right in the town and on the water, which could serve more people. And uh, because it also has environmental protection lens on it, I have read the environmental impact statement and I'm a kind of... Um, surprised by a couple of comments that are that have been made there. I did not have enough time to consult with professionals on it, uh, but I'm sure there will be more time to discuss environmental issues. So I just wanted to say um, and be you know, um, heard on record that um, um, I am in favor of development, but we should definitely take uh, care of our environment and what we do along our shorelines, especially if there will be future accesses to that shoreline from that development. And as um, from the municipal point of view, a uh, question if there's more that we can give back to the public as part of this development. Here I'm thinking of parkland dedication and amenities that could serve the entire community as this is a prime um, location, as I said uh, before, uh, facing the lake and a major road. So with that in mind, I would like to just say that uh, I hope there will be more discussion on um, behalf of the city, the planner, obviously, and the, and the township with the developer to make sure that it's not a one-sided, but it's a benefit to the community as a whole. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Homick, did you want to respond? Um, sure, I have certainly say, you know, you know, thank you very much for the support. That's, that's appreciated. Um, I think with respect to the form of housing, I think what we're trying to do is something that is respectful of the existing uh, neighborhood that surrounds the site. Um, and if we do ultimately end up providing some form of access to the lake, I think it'll actually end up providing, you know, this, this development um, could have as many as, um, uh, sorry, could, you know, could have as many as, 78 units. And so that could actually provide uh, 78 families with access to the waterfront on this property. So um, just something to keep in mind. And, and uh, just to your last point about the environmental protection. Uh, yes, as was, uh, you may have missed it earlier, but we certainly talked about how the environmental uh, impact study is being peer reviewed. And there is, um, there's still ample opportunity for you to review that environmental report and uh, provide your comments and uh, be happy to address those. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, I see one more hand up. Uh, Zoom user, <laughs> if you could please turn your video on and, and let us know who you are. <laughs> Perhaps Zoom user doesn't know their hand is up. Oh, here we go. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Helen I can Rikowski. see you. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can see and hear you, Helen. Okay, two questions. Um, what type of, of residents are you uh, hoping to attract to this um, housing development? Is it young families? Is it seniors? Is it, um, I, I, my concern is what, what attract, what kind of, of uh, occupants are you looking for? Retirement people or active working people or um, single people or housing, uh, like full families? And my next question is, you haven't determined yet whether or not 
the company will build the homes that will be single family dwellings or whether someone will purchase a lot and they will have a carpenter or a contractor come in and build their own home. Okay. Those are my two Mr. questions. Okay, Mr. Homick. Sure, uh, on the first point, um, it's, it's still, early on in the process. And so there hasn't been a marketing strategy or anything like that developed in terms of who's to be attracted. But um, I can say, you know, it would it would certainly be open to anybody and everybody. Uh, it wouldn't be just any sort of discrimination about who, who would be able to live in these units. But, um, you know, just sort of speaking in terms of the site location and the proximity to the hospital, it's probably a, a high chance that the, that the units will be... Um, um, marketed towards the seniors and people who are looking to live close to the hospital. Uh, but it's also entirely possible that there will be young families and, you know, hopefully young doctors that maybe want to live in this uh, development and who are going to be working at the hospital. So it's really um, too, too early to say, but it's, it's really, it could, could be anybody, but uh, I think that the proximity to the hospital would be ultimately a big driver of who ends up living in these units. Um, and then to your second point, yes, we, we don't know yet uh, who would be building these and we don't know yet if, uh, if they will be um, built out all at once or if, uh, as you suggested, if they will be sold off as lots and individual owners will be responsible for building their own homes. We, we don't know. Okay, sorry, I do have another question. If you're building your own home, will it be a single family, like a, a one level or will they be allowed to build a two-story home? It will depend on what the zoning bylaw says for the for those uh, for that particular lot, but uh, currently the zoning bylaw has a 14 meter height limit, uh, which is actually about four stories. So they won't be four stories tall, but uh, they may not be bungalows. They may be two stories, maybe three stories. Hmm. Okay. Well, that would really impact the view <laughs> from where I live. Um, okay. Um, so you're not really geared to seniors with uh, uh, my under, my thoughts were that maybe uh, seniors would move into uh, an apartment or a condo and sell their own home, which would free up a lot of housing in Barry's Bay, maybe. Um, but if they're going to be totally out of reach of purchasing a senior most seniors don't want to purchase a home. They want to have a rental unit at, at, at a senior stage in life. So some rental units, I think, would be extremely important and geared to, I'm not saying um, low-income housing, but I am saying affordable housing for a senior's income. And we have many um, single seniors, widowed seniors in Barry's Bay or widowers and they are looking for housing. They would love to stop looking after their home and move into what you're saying there as an apartment maybe would be, or a housing development that would be built, single family home or two bedroom uh, in a townhouse. And then they would not have to look after their lawns or, or snow removal. So something like that would be very interested there'd be a lot of people interested in something like that i would say and including my husband and i and therefore our home would go up for sale and and it would open up a housing for young families and for middle-aged families whoever wants to have their own home so okay. that's that's one of my concerns okay thank you uh, I, I think that certainly the developer is, has looked into our community and, and does recognize there is there is a huge need for for the kind of housings that a lot of seniors are looking for, uh, single story or apartment. Um, so certainly that's something that is on council's mind. We are concerned to ensure that there's a variety of housing and rental uh, accommodations available to our seniors who do want to. Uh, often want to um, put their cottage property that they've retired to up for sale and, and move closer into town and have a little bit of support through, as you said, through not being responsible for lawns and gutters or and, and being able to have a rental unit uh, that they can live in town. 
uh, well, and this is pretty much as close as you can get to the hospital short of being there. Yes. So uh, yes, there are some very strong points in, in favor of that for many members of our community who are looking for that kind of accommodation. And I'm certain that the developer will be taking that into consideration because it becomes important to marketing that you're providing something that the community actually needs. I agree. Uh, is there is there anyone else who I have missed who would like to speak on Zoom? Again, I have two screens and every time I flip from one to the other, often people move. So bear with me. <laughs> I'm not seeing any other hands. Does anyone else see any other hands that I've missed? Okay, Sue, no. I think we're good with the people on Zoom. And one final chance for anyone in council chambers who wishes to speak to this uh, proposal. Uh, Shelly Micah would like to ask a question. Okay. This is a question for Anthony. Sorry, I kind of can't see you. <laughs> so clearly the, the developer is coming in. They have a vision and they have a plan. They're, they're not just coming in and on a whim and a prayer and saying, oh, there's some available land. Let's develop it and see what happens. I think Helen has made some excellent points. And I, to be quite honest, I think those are going to be the questions that our community at large is asking. Exactly who are the, who is this development targeted towards? And I know it's early in the process and, and a marketing plan may have not been specifically developed, but there's a vision by the developer to come in at this stage and even consider doing in a development. Is the development being targeted towards seniors in the city that are going to sell their homes and, and move here, which is okay. I mean, that's okay too. But, or is the original concept directed towards the local community in any way, shape or form? I mean, there is some, you know, duplexes tend to, to cost less than a single family dwelling. Um, stacked condos, again, the price point on that is going to be much less than a, a single family dwelling. But are we looking at a development here where to get in, even at the lowest price point, <clears throat> is a half a million dollars? I mean, that's the question at large, I think the community wants, wants to know. Um, we need housing. And when we say affordable housing, don't mistake me for social housing that is um, funded in part by the government. I mean, affordable housing, i.e. the senior that does live here and can sell their home locally for maybe $300,000, maybe. And there's potentially some wiggle room uh, there or less or, or again, you know, with, with potential rentals. Um, I mean, there's clearly a vision. Someone doesn't go in and, and go to this stage of the game without knowing who they're targeting. So that, that's my question. For some clarity, I think, to So there's not misinformation floating around in the community because there's already been some on social media. I think if you could try to give some clear direction, um, to, to, that would be helpful. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Shelley. Uh, Anthony, is there anything that you can add to what you said at this point in time? I realize you're limited. <laughs> yeah, I, I really, um, you know, as much as I'd love to add to that, um, just to maybe reiterate what I said a couple of minutes ago about the proximity to the hospital, I think that um, there, there will be a... Um, a significant component of the, of the development is going to be targeted towards seniors, um, but it's certainly as 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 you uh, as Miss Micah mentioned, there's there's there isn't a there is not actually a marketing strategy that has been uh, put together yet. So it it very well could be a mix of seniors that may be moving out from a bigger city to Barry's Bay, or it may be local downsizers. So it's it is too early to say. And and um, so yes, unfortunately, I can't really add to anything that's already been said. Okay, thank you. I, you can only do what you can do. <laughs> I realize that. All right, but uh, uh, Shelley, your comments have been noted and uh, certainly uh, the developer who I do believe he has joined us. I believe he is here somewhere, I did see him. He, he will be hearing the comments that are being made by the community and, and certainly will hear the, the types of housing that we feel there is a huge need for. Um, 
Okay, I just got a note, a text that someone else's hand is up. And I can't, why can I not see it? Okay, uh, sorry. Oh, I hope it's not still mine. I think it is yours, Helen. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm done. I, okay, I just, I, I assumed that you had completed and it was just that your yeah. hand was stuck up. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I've gone through everyone on Zoom and I've gone through everyone in council chambers a couple of times. And I'm hoping I have captured everyone as best we can in this preliminary stage and that you're all a little better informed. So at this point, if there's no objections, and I, I don't think there should be, I would like to move to questions, discussion by council. And give me one second to find all of the council because as people have, oh, I can't move anyone while someone's hand is raised. Okay, well, at least I've found them. How the heck do I get that off? You know what? I'm honestly not sure <laughs> how you put your hand down, but it's okay. Oh, Gwen, I found. How do I get that off? I don't know if can Gwen... Gwen hear me. She can probably hear you. Let's oh, see. She doesn't seem Action. to be. Yeah. Hmm. Is there where you raised your hand? Is there now a button that says lower your hand? Unfortunately, no. Okay. Oh, so we'll... stop video. No, don't, don't, that would just turn off your video. It's okay, I will deal with it. So I can see all of council now. So I'm going to move on to questions discussion by council and members of council. If you could put your hands up if you wish to speak. I believe Councillor Poplinski's hand is up. Councillor Poplinski. Thanks, Mary Love. And a lot of really good questions and I think uh, I think this is a good process. I have a couple of uh, short questions. It might be a little premature, but the first one deals with Trader Lane and the side street. Is there an expectation at some point in the future that the township will assume that as part of the road system? And if so, then consideration would be have to be given to the type of composition that would be accepted under the current standards. I assume that would be the case. So if, if, if there's a note made of that, that's fine. I don't expect a, an answer right now, but that would be one of the things that I would be concerned about. And uh, the second one is regarding the vacant land. And um, is there any plans at this point in time, but once again, it could be premature, whether it could be some park setting for the residents to enjoy? Okay, and that's my two you. questions. Okay, thank you, thank Councilor you. Plinsky. I will turn it over to Mr. Homick to answer. Sure, yeah. <clears throat> thank you, uh, Councilor, for those questions. Uh, on the first question, yes, it is proposed that the new street, that uh, the new cul-de-sac that would serve the subdivision uh, would be turned over and assumed by the municipality. And so um, as part of the geotechnical report, there was a uh, there is recommendations in there in terms of the road construction. And uh, those would obviously have to be uh, vetted and approved by municipal operations staff. So uh, there will be further discussions on that. Uh, and with respect to the vacant land, uh, I can't remember who said it, but somebody mentioned earlier on, on uh, in the discussion about parkland dedication. And so uh, there is a parkland dedication component of the subdivision approval process, whether that's uh, land dedication or whether that's cash in lieu. And so that is is certainly something that could be could be discussed with um, county staff with respect to uh, whether or not, and it really comes down to whether or not the the lands are appropriate to be dedicated as as public park. Um, so it, it it may not suit given the fact that it is wetland. Um, however, that's certainly something that can be taken into consideration. Okay, so at this point, no decision has been made on that. That's for, for future discussion. Correct. All right. Are there any other questions from Council? Councillor Wilmer or discussion? Not so much a question, but more discussion. And I think it's really important to say that, you know, these are early days with this development and things may change as they go. And we've heard that, you know, we're not sure whether they're going to be apartments or stacked townhouses or, you know, lots of things can change. But to me, this is very, very exciting. I've lived here 12 years, and this is the first time I've seen a development come forward with mixed use of housing. And that's one thing this community desperately needs. We, we see large lake homes being develop, developed, 
And, and I've talked to people who are worried that when they, they have to sell those homes, they will have nowhere to live. So to have stacked townhomes or apartments or whatever ends up there, I, I think this is a really, really good development. Does it solve all our housing problems? No, we still have to address the affordable housing issues. And I was really happy to hear Luke's comments that he has, that it's on his radar and he's looking at several options or solutions or, or not solutions, but just options and, and ways to, to deal with that. So to me, this is exciting. There's a long way to go. It's early days and we need to, we need to sort of keep moving forward. Public input is an extremely important at this phase because that will go a long way to determining what the final outcome of this project looks like. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Wilmer. Uh, any other members of council? Councillor Shulist, I believe your hand is up. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and through you. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm very excited. I don't have any, any questions. Uh, this is great uh, input from the, from the public. Uh, one thing I'm excited about, because I know we've identified that we have a, a housing uh, situation here in our community, and uh, I'm, I'm quite excited to see uh, a developer uh, coming in and, and investing in our community. And I think that we need to encourage uh, this kind of development. And, uh, and again, is this uh, project going to take care of all our needs uh, there might be a shortfall on, on some, but, you know, uh, just having a developer look at our community and investing in our community, I think this is a wonderful, wonderful thing for, for, our, for all of us here. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Councillor Shulist and Councillor Bromwich. Thank you, through you, Chair. Finally, I just want to reiterate that uh, we have a huge demand here and a very small supply of homes. And it's very encouraging to see a mixed use uh, happening right now instead of just uh, one type of home being offered up. And I think of it, uh, it's starting to attract developers in the private sector to uh, put their money on the table and start building mixed homes. And I think it's really encouraging to see that happening. This is the beginning, I hope, of uh, many more to come. I don't want to see a runaway economy like uh, Muskoka had. I'd like to have a controlled development, but we do have a, an awful lot of land here and uh, a very large demand for uh, senior homes. And uh, this is a really good start. I think it's encouraging. I'm excited. Um, hey, good, good for us. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Councillor Bromwich. Any uh, further questions or discussion from Council? Okay, I'm not seeing any hands. I'd, I'd just like to note that, you know, as mayor, although I am coming to the end of my term and this project will, continue with the next council. So your new council will have a lot of say in this. And I, I know that uh, the input of the public is going to be a huge factor in this. But as your mayor, who is about to not be your mayor anymore, I was very excited when this project was brought uh, initially to staff because it is a different kind of housing and some potential options to do what is so hard to attract, which is the kind of housing that is good for seniors or possibly even rental accommodations. And that is significantly difficult to attract to a small community. We do need, we, we need an assortment of housing for our seniors. We need an assortment of housing for young families. So what's being offered here is something different from what we've been seeing, which is the, the lakefront properties, the the opportunity to build multi-million dollar homes. This, I think this development uh, is something that, while it may not be affordable housing per se, it is a start in the right direction to seeing some development that is more meeting the needs of our community at this point. And, and we're all experiencing that as we get older and realizing that the, the homes that we've had for many, many years are becoming too much and we are looking to downsize. So this is a great project for that. This is at least, it's leading the way towards a different kind of housing for our community. And uh, I certainly appreciate that the developers have, have taken this approach and that they're open to the, the comments and the input of this community. And it's a great thing to have a, a day like today, an afternoon like today, when we all get to 
have a little say about this and uh, begin a process of growing something good for our community. I'd like to thank everyone who's, who's here for your attendance and for your input. I want to remind the public that you can continue to have input, provide input in writing uh, to municipal staff, to county staff, and uh, let's make this a great project for our community. We can do that together. Um, at this point, if there's nothing further from Council, I think I will ask Sue to read the very lengthy notification that we do at the end of a public meeting. Uh, Council is also required by Section 51, Section 20.3 of the Planning Act to inform the public of who is entitled to appeal to the Ontario Land Tribunal under Sections 51, 34, 5139, 5143, and 5148 as follows. In accordance with Section 5134 of the Planning Act, if the approval authority fails to make a decision for the approval of a plan of subdivision under subsection 31 within 120 days after the day the application is received by the approval authority, the applicant may appeal to the Ontario Land Tribunal by filing a notice with the approval authority accompanied by the fee charged by the tribunal. In accordance with Section 5139 of the Planning Act, if the approval authority gives or refuses to give approval to a draft plan of subdivision not later than 20 days after the day that the giving of notice under subsection 37 is completed, the applicant or any person or public body that made oral submissions at the public meeting or written submissions to the approval authority or the minister may appeal the decision, the lapsing provision, or any of the conditions to the Ontario Land Land Tribunal by filing with the approval authority a notice of appeal that must set out the reasons for the appeal accompanied by the fee charged by the tribunal. In accordance with sections 5143 of the Planning Act, at any time before the approval of the final plan of subdivision under subsection 58, the applicant or any person or public body that made oral submissions at the public meeting or written submissions to the approval authority or the minister may appeal any of the conditions to the Ontario Land Tribunal by filing with the approval authority a notice of appeal that must set out the reasons for the appeal accompanied by the fee charged by the tribunal. In accordance with Section 5148 of the Planning Act, the applicant or any person or public body that made oral submissions at the public meeting or written submissions to the approval authority or the minister may appeal any of the changed conditions imposed by the approval authority to the Ontario Land Tribunal by filing with the approval authority a notice of appeal that must set out the reasons for the appeal accompanied by the fee charged by the tribunal. Okay, thank you, Sue. And uh, thank you, Mr. Homick, for allowing me to put you on the spot numerous times. <laughs> <laughs> I do appreciate that, that uh, you're a good sport. I'd like to thank municipal staff as well. Uh, Luke, I, I thank you for letting me put you on the spot and Mr. Kuchkowski too. <laughs> as well, members of the public, thank you for being here. And I know that Adam. I did see Mayor Mark. Love. Yes. Yes, Sue. Yes, yeah, sorry, Mary Love, there was just a written question that came from the council chambers. And if I could just speak to next steps, if that's okay, okay. just to inform No, that would be, that would be perfect. Go, go ahead. Yeah, so so I, I, as said previously, county staff and township staff are always happy and available to have discussions with members of the public. Uh, lots of great questions here. If, if people felt that there was more of a response needed, they can always uh, submit uh, questions by email to staff and we will get a response to them. But as far as uh, milestones and next steps go, uh, the next one is the significant step is for all agencies uh, to issue their conditions for the approval of this uh, plan of subdivision. Uh, Hydro One may have uh, comments to say Ontario uh, Power Generation, for example, uh, but in within those agencies, um, um, one of the most significant or the most significant is the township. The township will work towards uh, working with the developer, their agent and the county to establish what our conditions are for moving forward with this plan of subdivision because Within this development, the infrastructure will in time become ours and the layout of this lot and um, the other uh, components of it. So we're going to have to firm up what our um, position is on uh, by reviewing the studies and by working with the uh, by working with the developer and the agent and their 
um, agent to say what those conditions are. Those conditions will be brought to council to be ratified and, and brought to uh, then the county. At that point in time, county will issue what's called draft approval. That means that this plan of subdivision is, is approved in concept, pending the satisfaction of the conditions that have been established. Um, uh, there's asking for timelines. I'm not going to provide timelines at this time with staff are, are, you know, as we said, this is an exciting project. We're looking to move forward and we're not going to sit on this, but I, I can't, I can't guarantee any timelines uh, today. And uh, as I mentioned, so we have the draft approval stage. Once those conditions are satisfied, we move towards final approval and ultimately uh, as well a subdivision agreement. Thank okay, you. Th thank you, Luke. And, and I, as you said, there's no way that anyone at this point in time can give a definitive timeline because each input sometimes requires time to get something back. I, I failed to mention, I'd like to thank Lindsay Bennett uh, Farquhar of the County of Renfrew, our county planner. And there he is, Mr. Wilson, thank you so much. I, I realized that you did join us eventually. You were on my page too, and I did not get a chance to, to welcome you to the meeting. but. Everyone, thank you so much. It was uh, certainly an excellent uh, beginning to this process. And with that, I'm going to declare that the meeting is closed. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you.